in the last module we posed this problem given a model how do we detect deadlocks what are the properties that can be checked on the model that will reveal deadlocks before answering this question let us try to answer a simpler question what is a property the goal is to attach a mathematical meaning to the word property for a model we have a mathematical description in terms of states and transitions similarly we want to attach a mathematical description with the word property let us start building this definition through examples consider the transition system which we had seen previously with variables request and status this is the new smv code corresponding to this transition system consider two boolean expressions formed out of variables of this transition system this expression checks if request is 1 this is true if request is 1 it is false if request is 0 let me call this boolean expression as p1 similarly this is another boolean expression which says status equal to busy this expression is true if status is busy and it's false if status is ready let me call this expression as p2 we will call these expressions as atomic propositions the use of these atomic propositions will become clearer during the rest of the module given these two atomic propositions let us evaluate these propositions on the states in this state request is 1 so p1 is true however p2 is false as status is ready in this state both p1 and p2 are true in this state what is your guess p1 is false but p2 is true and what about this state both of them are false given a new smv code we define these atomic propositions and then we evaluated these atomic propositions on the transition system and this is what we have what do we do with this now consider an execution of the transition system along this execution let me evaluate the atomic propositions here both p1 and p2 are false p2 is true here none of them is true here here both of them are true yet again both of them are true given an execution by evaluating the atomic propositions on each of the states in this execution we get a view of this execution in terms of just the atomic propositions in the sense that if the only aspect of the execution that i care about is just about p1 and p2 this string gives me the view and this string is called the trace given an execution evaluate the set of atomic propositions on each of the states and the resulting word is called a trace let us look at another example for this execution by evaluating the two atomic propositions this is the trace that we get i hope this concept is clear given two atomic propositions we evaluate these atomic propositions on each state and the resulting word is called the trace let me be a bit more precise let ap 
be the set of atomic propositions. In the previous case, we had only P1 and P2, but in general, you can start with any finite number of atomic propositions. What is the power set of AP? The power set consists of either the empty set or the set consisting of individual elements or the set consisting of 2, 3 and so on till the set consisting of all of them. This is the standard definition of a power set. We took a set AP and we have written what is the power set of this set. The trace of an execution is an infinite word over the power set. For example, the trace here is the infinite word obtained by concatenating these sets. So the word is empty the set P2, empty the set P1, P2, the set P1, P2 and so on. The trace of an execution is an infinite word over power set of AP. What is the set of traces of a transition system? You take a transition system, look at the set of its executions and for each of its execution, write the corresponding trace. You will get a set and this set is called the traces of the transition system. This is the definition. Is the set of trace of sigma for each sigma being an execution of the transition system. Let us try to write to some extent the set of traces of this transition system. For this execution, the one that keeps looping around the state, the trace is this word. For the execution that starts here, goes to this state and keeps looping, the trace is this word. Look at this trace. Can you guess what is the execution for which this is the trace? There is an execution which starts at P1, goes to this state, goes to this state and loops around. For this execution, this will be the trace. Similarly, for this trace, you start here, go to this state and keep looping. And there are many more as there are many more executions. In general, the set of traces could be an infinite set of words. This set of traces of a transition system, this describes its behavior with respect to the atomic propositions. If I do not care about anything else but the truth of these atomic propositions, and the behavior as the system evolves, I should be looking at the traces of the transition system with respect to these atomic propositions. This is giving me a view of the transition system in terms of the atomic propositions. This is the first checkpoint in this module. We have seen what are atomic propositions and we have defined the set of traces of a transition system. We will now see what is a property. Let me denote AP inf to be the set of infinite words over the power set AP. So this set gives us all the possible words. Let me now write a statement which we intuitively call a property which says that P1 is always true. This statement will filter out all words in AP inf in which every letter 
contains P1. AP inf is a set of infinite worlds over power set AP. So this is a world in AP inf. Each letter is a part of the power set of AP and now each letter contains P1. So this word in AP inf satisfies the property that P1 is always true. Look at this word. Yet again, each AI, I mean in this definition, each AI contains P1. So this word also satisfies the statement P1 is always true. Look at another example. This statement says that P1 is true at least once and P2 is always true. Let us first look at these words. In this word, P2 is always true and P1 is true here. So this satisfies this condition. Look at this word. P1 is true in the first set itself. Each set we call a letter because we are calling this as a word. Each set we can call it a letter. So each letter contains P2 and there is one letter which contains P1. Essentially, the words that satisfy the statement are of this form. They are a sequence of letters with each letter being a power set of AP such that there exists a letter which contains P1 and every letter contains P2. Notice that we have given two properties. Each property filtered a set of words in the sense each property corresponds to a set of words. This in fact is a generic definition of property. Given a set AP of atomic propositions, you look at the set of infinite words formed by the power set of AP and the property over these atomic propositions is just a subset of AP inf. For example, this is a property defined by this subset of AP inf. Similarly, this is a property over AP defined by this subset of AP inf. It is important to train yourself to think of a property as a set of words. Once you are clear with this view of a property, you would be able to appreciate the rest of this unit better. This brings us to the second checkpoint in this module. We have seen two things. The first thing is the description of a transition system in terms of the set of its traces. You pick some atomic propositions and describe the behavior of a transition system in terms of its traces with respect to these atomic propositions. The second thing that we have seen is that a property is nothing but a subset of traces. Finally, when do we say that a transition system satisfies a property? Again, we will first look at an example. Consider this transition system with these atomic propositions. We have already evaluated the atomic propositions on the states. Consider the property. To give a property, you need to give a subset of words from AP inf. But of course, the subset could be infinite. So you need a way to describe that subset. And for that, you will make use of the already seen operators. G of P1 says that P1 is always true. 
the transition system satisfies the property if the set of its traces is included in the set of words given by this property. For example, GP1 will give us the set of all words where each letter contains P1. This transition system will satisfy this property only if every execution has every state satisfying P1. In particular, this transition system does not satisfy this property because you have this execution. This execution does not belong to the subset given by this. So let me reiterate this point. A property over a set of atomic propositions is a subset of AP inf. AP inf is nothing but the set of infinite words over the power set of AP. Since this is a set of words, we also call it linear time property. This explains the name of this unit which says linear time property. We have seen three important things. The behavior of a transition system with respect to its traces. What a property over AP is and when does a system satisfy a property. This is a very important module. If you are not clear with any of these concepts, I would urge you to have a look at them before proceeding to the next module. The ideas are however simple. Try to understand what traces are, what a property is, it is just a subset. The system satisfies the property if this trace set is included in this subset given by the property.